This evening, we continue with conflict resolution and skills as they apply in relationships. Conflict resolutions, conflict resolution tools and skills as they apply in relationship. And last week, we took our time to look at conflict and where we look at it as a difference in opinions where resulting in emotional disturbance or instability, resulting in negative acting out. And when there is negative acting out, then you see that there is conflict. And when there is that conflict, there is the need for the resolution to come to be established. To do that today, we would pick up a tool. But we will go to the great master who will enable us to be able to understand all this, and that is to go to God. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, who we love, I lift over all the earth. Father, lately I have found myself in a place that I do not want to be. Anger, hatred, and bitterness is causing me to lash out at the people around me and especially at my dear loved ones. I am on the edge at every point. The slightest gesture upsets me. I cannot continue on like this. Oh, Father, please hear my cry. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. So we continue today with our topic that is conflict resolution. Conflict resolution tools and skills. Last week we began and we looked at a few things. We looked at the common mistakes and we look at the fact that we needed to accept our faults. And then we look at three mistakes that men do, and we, we look at also three mistakes that women do or commit in conflict resolution, such that it prevents us from understanding who we are. It prevents us from understanding who we are, so that we will be able to know where, what to do. So today, we will continue the subject. We will continue the subject and we'll go on. Today, we are looking at conflict resolution tools, conflict resolution tools. The first thing that we do, we say, is that often we do not, we, we, don't have the information and the skills to handle conflict. So we fight or flee in, we do not fight or flee in the wrong way or in the right way. I should, I should be saying we fight in the wrong way, please, sorry. Because we do not usually have the information to be able and the skills to handle conflict. We fight or flee in the wrong way. Please note the mistake in the slide. It is the wrong way because we do not know, have the right information and the skills. And it is true, for lack of knowledge, we perish. Many of us do the things in the way that we want. But it is necessary that in every conflict resolution, we try to fight or we flee. And we must know when to fight and when to flee. We must know when to fight and when to flee. So we need, we need to have the, we need to be able to have the tools so that we will know 
how to fight. We often choose unconsciously our tools for conflict resolution based on whenever there is a conflict, whenever there is a difference in opinion, we usually base our resolution on a number of things. One, our level of concern for ourselves. That is how assertive we are. Here, you know, when you are very assertive, when you are very conscious, to stand up, you are able to defend your rights. So the level of your assertiveness will depend will determine the way you will approach the resolution of a conflict. When your assertiveness is very low, you see that you approach conflict from a different point of view. The second one is your level of concern for others. That is care. The way you are concerned for others will also determine how much you will be able to you'll be able to get involved in the resolution of a conflict. When you put these two together, it results in a matrix. It results in a matrix of a um, of trying to put together our level of self, how we are concerned about ourselves and how we are concerned about others. Now, when you look at David, when David went to face Goliath, he, had, he picked five stones, but he only used one. Which of them do you think he would have picked? If you would see from your screens, you see that there are five stones that David, that David will be using. Which of them will he use? David would pick any of the stones, and, but he would pick according to what he thinks was necessary. Sometimes it may be necessary to pick a large stone. Sometimes it may be necessary to pick a small stone or a medium stone, depending on what you want to achieve. So in the same way, there are five selves, there are five tools of resolu conflict resolution skills that I would want us to focus on for today. We are going to be focusing on five levels of five conflict tools. Why didn't David use all at once? Which of the stones did he use first? If you had skills to be able to use during your conflict resolution, which of them would you use first? Why would you use that one? That is what we are going to. Each person tends to use one of the, these that more often depend on the situation or our level of selfishness. So now, the level of selfishness is what I talk about your concern, either concern for self or concern for others. And then the, the situation itself. So a situation will arise. Maybe there is you are fighting about finance, or you are fighting about the child's upkeep, or you are fighting about the way the two of you relate. If it is an emergency, now that is the situation. Then the next thing is that you yourself, what is inside, your, your level of assertiveness or your level of caring. So if you are so much, or you are overly concerned about yourself, you see that you, the, the conflict tool that you choose will be different. If you care more about the other person, the conflict tool that you choose will also be different. And there are about five conflict tools that we are going to be looking at. One is distancing or avoiding, and the other one is dom dominating. And we also have obliging, and then we have compromising, and then the last one is 
collaborating, collaborating, okay, collaborating. So the next one that we will be doing, we are looking at is when you are in conflict with someone, when you are in conflict with someone, what do we do? When you are in conflict with someone, there is one factor that can make the difference between between uh, that makes the difference between damaging your relationship and deepening it and that is called the that is called what the attitude so your attitude in which you get into the conflict that determines the way you you choose so now you, what is your attitude this was said by james Will, uh, william james who says that whenever we are in a conflict with someone there is one factor that there is one factor that can make the difference and that is either you, it will be damaging or it will be what deepening your relationship and that factor is your attitude your attitude that is our attitude so what is our attitude now we need to look at it first we are going to be looking at Conflict resolution tools. Conflict resolution tools. The first one is avoiding. The first one is avoiding. Now, if you look at the, the table to see, you see that to the, the lower bottom, we have concern for self. Concern for self. And that is what we call assertiveness. So if you have a low concern for self, if you have a low concern for yourself, then you have a, you are lower assertive. If you have a higher concern for yourself, then you are very assertive. Then the next one to the scale upwards on the left side is concern for others. If you are very, you know, your concern for others is low, then you are dealing with low cooperation. And if your concern for others is high, then you will have a higher cooperation or a higher caring. So now we are looking at somebody who is low in cooperation and low in assertiveness. Somebody who is low in cooperation, low in what? Assertive. That means that such a person is uh is it's not is it doesn't it's not too much interested in itself and it's not too much interested in the other person too such a when anything happens what is the way when there is a when there is a difference in opinion when there is a difference in opinion what method does such a person use it's called avoiding it's called the avoiding or you distance and you walk away and then you just try to that is, you don't care. You don't want care. But this avoiding a walk away have their advantage. But there are some people who use it always. When it is that way, it is either because you are very low in cooperating or you, are very, you, don't, you don't want to offend anybody and you don't want to offend yourself. So the avoiding, this avoiding involves a low concern for others and a low concern for self. So people who are always avoiding, this is a symbol that is for us also. It is a sign that is, is there for us. Okay. Number two is that this style is the most often used, is most often used by people who have difficulty facing conflict and by people who are unwilling either to accept blame or to place it on others. So there are some of us who are, they don't want to offend or they just need, so if they don't want to offend, they will just be practicing the avoiding, avoiding type. And that, that has its advantage set in set. Sometimes it gives the opportunity, avoiding as a conflict tool, helps us to be able to cool off. Either you yourself, you cool off, or you are able to allow the other person to cool. There are some people, when they have problem, they will just insist. You say, let's cut it. They'll say, no. You say, let's cut it. They say, no. Or you even want to cut it. They, you, they, it is good that sometimes we practice avoid. 
we just do distancing. But not every day. Sometimes you need to face the circumstance when everything has been calmed down and you are be able to. There are some people who don't know timing. All they do is that they just attack and attack and attack. That is sometimes very, very dangerous. So, but this one is avoiding. So avoiding. But if you use the avoiding style of thing, then, then from today, you must think of adopting the next tools so that you can be a better person at conflict resolution. So if you are somebody who always adopts the avoiding style in your conflict resolution, then I am proposing to you that there are other forms of ways that we can, we, we can use. And that is the next one that we are going to look at. The next one is called the dominating, the dominating style. That is where you have, you are so much concerned about yourself and you don't have the same level of concern for another. When, when you are in a conflict, when there are differences in opinion and all you care about is yourself and you don't also think about the other person, you see that what happens is that you begin to be domineering, even though in your mind that's not what you think or that's not what you want. But at the end of the day, you see that you are so domineering, you are so aggressive, and, that, and you are full of violence, and you offend people without even knowing, because you think that, yes, this is what should be done. So as for me, I have done it. You see, we need to understand these conflict tools so that we will know how to fight and how to flee. Sometimes we just think that because I think it's right, you just do it without thinking about the other person. So it is necessary that we look at the dominating, the dominating complex scale. Some of us choose dominating when we have a low level of concern for others, but high concern for ourselves. So it's all about us. It's all about us. And then you impose your ideas on people like that. And then you say that, oh, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend you. But you end up offending people. When you people, people who are like that, they end up being alone. They end up find, they finding it difficult to get friends. Yes, domineering is good, especially when there is conflict, when there is war situation, when it has to be, the decision has to be taken subito, pronto, like that. That one, you need a domineering spirit to be able to do that. But when you bring it too much into a relationship, you end up being alone. You may, if you are so domineering, you end up being, you see that you, you, you don't have friends because even your friends try to run away from you. And you say that, oh, but I didn't mean it that way, you see, just because you are domineering. People who constantly use dominating style in, in resolving conflict are often seen as tyrants who do not appear to care about others. Even they may think they care for others and are perceived only as being interested in getting what they want. So for you, it's just about the business. Let us, let us get it done. No, it's not just about the business, but how you get the business also done. It's very important that you consider the person. Maybe the person is not ready now. If the person is not ready now, you need to find another time. Maybe you need to practice avoiding. It's not yet time. So if somebody is also always domineering, maybe you can, that person also needs to practice sometimes avoiding. There are some of the things that you just say that, oh, I can hold on for some time for now. I can hold on for some time for now. Dominating can be appropriate in a situation where the decision must be taken, must be reached immediately. And no consensus can be reached. Imagine when there is fire in the house. Imagine when the child is sick or somebody is sick. And then somebody says that, well, I, do, I think that I know. You need a domineering person to be able to take the decision once and then everybody shall follow like that. When the dominating style is used, the person using the dominating style must ensure that the decision she or he makes is in, the, is in line with the good of the relationship. Now, oftentimes, because the person who is using the dominate, dominating style or tool 
thinks about himself or herself, he or she thinks that my good is our good. My good is our good. And that is why you end up dominating. So sometimes if you have that attitude, you need to be able to ask yourself, this thing that I am insisting on, is it really for all of us? Or is it me? Is it I who want it in that way? When we are able to do that, you see that we are able to solve and able to apply the best, the best of what? Of the re conflict resolution tool. We are able to apply the best of the conflict resolution tool. The next thing that we comes that comes up is after doing avoiding as a tool, we now look at dominating as a tool. So it is good, it is bad, but all depend on the attitude. Remember, you can damage your relationship or you can deepen your relationship based on your attitude. So you can use a dominating tool to be able to win and do good things. And you can use your dominating skill to be able to damage your relationship. All you need to do is to be able to have a good attitude at that relationship. The next tool is obliging. The next thing is obliging. That means that you feel obliged. You feel uh, as if you, 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 you feel compelled. It's not you, but you are doing it for them. And if you look at where it is the red one, you see that it is high sense of thinking for others, low for yourself. So every time it is for the other person. This is what they say I should do. When they see me, it is about the other. It's not about you. When it happens like that, you see that you are always pleasing people and not yourself. Sometimes this is very good. Sometimes this is also some very bad. So we need to look at this conflict resolution tool. And let us look at it. This is based, this is used when a person has a high concern for others and a low concern for self. That means that you are oftentimes thinking of the other person. You know, when this happens in marriage, you see the woman always thinking about the man. When he's thinking about the man, and then the man, if somebody, if you have this attitude and your husband or your wife is dominating, hey, then we are in trouble. So you see, sometimes we don't even study the conflict resolution tools that your partner uses even before you fall in love. People fall in love before they start to who the, who the person is. You know, falling in love doesn't mean that you have to get into the relationship with that person or get and marry the person. There are so many people who somebody proposes to you and when the person has proposed to you one year down the lane, you have not taken your time to study the way the person resolve his or her conflict. And you, you ask yourself, is this going to be is my, am I going to be able to tolerate this? You see, some, maybe you have a tendency always of obliging. And you look at the person that you are getting into the relationship with. Maybe the person is avoiding, then you are in trouble. Maybe the person is dominating, then you are in trouble. But whatever the thing is, you, everybody must learn after this teaching to be able to adapt like David going to the uh, face Goliath. You need to use one of the tools depending on the time. But some of us, we use only one method. One way, one block people. That is not good enough. We need to use. So it is necessary that this is a style that should not be used often if at all, during conflict management. Because people who use the style of conflict resolution cons consistently are often viewed as doormats. And that is how sometimes it is said men would want to make women in a relationship. They would want the women to become doormats. They would want them to become obliging. They would want them to just take it like that. And there are some women who are equally like that. 
every time they want to win the argument. So they are dominating and they wish that they are men that they have are just men who are obliging. They become dormant. When I say sleep, then you sleep. When you do like that, after a while, when the man or the woman wakes up from the slumber or the dream, you see that you will be a different person. And you say that, hey, my wife has changed you or my husband has changed you. No, because you have been dominating them for too long. Now it is time for they also to take their rightful place. You take their rightful place. So obliging is good. And sometimes it is necessary. If you choose to use the obliging style to resolve a conflict, ensure that you are doing it to remain in line with the good of the relationship. I use this one <clears throat> and I say, you cannot be wise always. Sometimes you must be the fool. Why is it that so many of us, every time in a relationship, you are the last to say sorry? Why? Because you are dominating or you are, or you are what? You are avoiding. There are some of us who are also, every time you are always the first to say what? Sorry. You wait for the other person to say sorry, then you just rush in saying so. No, because you have the obliging scale and you think that that is the only way. So you say, oh, nyashi, fama nyami, and nyashi, debi debi. Don't do it that way. If you do like that, you just become like a doormat and you'll be used wrongly. So, but sometimes we need to become fools in the relationship. So sometimes it is necessary in conflict resolution for you to choose the obliging method. For example, you don't understand why she says you should do this. But in order that there will be peace for today, you must oblige. But why is it that she cannot also not oblige? That is why it's painful and that is where it's sad that some people are always dominating and they don't want to apply. I believe that after today, there are so many of us who will say that, hey, now I know that this, in, this, in this instant, I am dominating too much. I need to what? I need to oblige. I need to change. When you do that, you see that there is a, so you see that obliging and dominating are two opposite sides of the coin, are two opposite sides of the coin. One is for self. And then on the other. So the next one, which is in the middle, the middle portion is what we call compromising. Compromising. What is compromise? Compromising is a conflict resolution skill. This is the second best style of compromising. And this contains a moderate amount of concern for yourself and others. You know, here, in this area, you are in the middle. You seem to be in the middle. It's a good way because sometimes it brings about peace like that, but not always. You know, compromising, sometimes you leave a lot of things unsaid or undone. So compromising takes less time than integrating, which will be the last one. And it is uh, it is appropriate when you have less time to come to a decision. So when you don't have much time, you, you, you use the compromising situation, which is just almost like the obliging. So I oblige and you dominate, you dominate and I oblige. And you see that between oblige and dominate, in between is what? The compromising. But there are some people who are only dominating and there are some people who are only obliging. Sometimes you need to find the middle ground, which is what? The compromising. In relationship, how many of us are able to compromise? It is sad. When you hear me like this, everybody is ready. You may just be asking, what about this? What about that? But are you also ready to compromise? Talk about yourself. Why is it that you are so much interested in the other person doing this? but not you doing the other thing. So compromising is necessary. And here again, you know, we compromise when there is not much time. But I ask you, you are in a relationship. Why don't you have time for each other? What is your relationship like? Why is it that you are in a relationship and you don't have time for each other to talk about issues that concern you? Unless you are, so that is what we need to look at. You must find time 
to talk about the issues. Otherwise, you are just falling back to the purple zone, which is what? Avoiding. So when there is no direct path, when there is only obliging, or in the blue part, when there is only dominating, if there is understanding, you get to the compromise. But when there is no understanding and both of you don't care, then you fall into the purple part, which is what? The avoiding system. So when this is telling you the level of interest that the person that you are dealing with has in that the relationship that the two of you have. Okay. Where there is integrating, is, is, is seeks to bring, is integrating, seeks to bring all the best ideas together. Compromising seeks to pick a solution that involves the least pain for everyone. So in compromising, usually there is the least pain. Where I lose some, you gain some. You gain some, I lose some. In a relationship, sometimes this can be good. Sometimes this can be bad. Because the thing that you are compromising for, today let's go to my mother. Tomorrow let's go to your father. But it's not like that. You forget that maybe my going to your place is not the same as your going to my place. The pain that I feel is not the same way. So it's not a compromising that let's go to my parents. And your, it depends on what is happening at each one's house. But sometimes for the sake of compromise, you say, well, last week we went to your house. So this week, let's come to my house. But we forget that the content of it may not be the same. So that's where sometimes compromising does not work. If you do not have time to work or bring all the ideas together, finding one that everyone can at least agree to use is your next best option, which is the integrating tool. That is the last tool for today that we are going to be looking at, the integrating tool. Now you see that is the green part and it is made green because that is where all of us must aim at. But everybody, all of us, have been practicing all these other tools. Now, what is that integrating part? We say that the best style is called the integrating because it involves a higher level concern for yourself and a higher level concern for others. So you make sure that what is wrong with you, you talk about it. And what is wrong with the other person? You help to solve. There are so many people. When it is in, you know, like the um, like the dominating style, you are only interested in yourself, but you don't care about the other. In the obliging, you are interested in others, but you don't care about yourself. In the avoiding, you are not interested so much in yourself and you are not interested in about others. So you just avoid. In compromise, you put all together and try to make some nice uh, soup that is put, uh, 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 the Italians will say, a Macedonia, a salad of what? Many, many uh, fruits, like that fruit salad. But in the green part, which is the integrating part, that is you are interested in yourself. So you talk about your problems. You don't hide things under the carpet. Then also you are able to what? Look, look out for the interest of the other person. So you respect the other person, but you also seek the other person's need. This style is the most appropriate when you have enough time and you must find, make enough time to spend debating, working towards a positive solution that will benefit everyone including and especially yourself. Seek and it seeks to bring all the, uh, all the most positive aspects of everyone's uh, idea into the solution. So when there's integration, there is talking. We talk, we talk, and we talk. This is what is lacking in most relationships. If you are in a relationship, if you are in a relationship, especially a relationship of intimacy, you must find time to talk. You must find time to talk. That is why it is not good that over a whole year, couples do not make time to go out, sit together, and talk. That is dangerous. And yet, you want somebody to pray over you overnight, and all your problems will be solved. How is it possible? 
when you don't do that which is important for us, that is what is killing us. That is what is killing most of the time, most of us. You must make time. You must make time to for for for, for your. Now this is the most. I, I say that. Do not forget here. Do not forget integrating and compromising. You see where integrating and compromising are. These are the best option. If you cannot integrate, at least find compromise. But the best way is to integrate. Talk about all that worries you, but be concerned also about that which worries your partner. Number two, dominating and obliging are opposite ends. Dominating seeks to gain control while obliging seeks to give away control. So if you are relating with your partner and your partner is always keeping quiet and you are always enjoying it, remember you are not in a good relationship. If you are in a relationship and your partner is also always dominating, is always wanting to just bring up things and just confuse you, remember that is also damaging the relationship. So both of you, at some time, you must allow yourself to be dominated and you must allow yourself to be to oblige to the circumstance. But avoiding is only appropriate as a temporal measure and should not be used as an end in itself in conflict. So whenever there is a conflict, please do not use avoiding. Use avoiding as a temporal solution so that you will be able to cool off. It is said, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. So you just avoid to come back to fight again. So avoiding is also a, an important conflict resolution tool, but it must be used well. You know that there is a problem in your relationship. How are you going to talk about it? Don't just start using domineering style or don't just use obliging style. Don't just find a compromise. Go to integration. And by integration, you need time for yourselves. What do you use your weekend for? What do you use your holidays for? Why is it that you are always saying, let's go and visit this person, let's go and visit that? You find time to go to work and other things. But then the relationship is not that one. You don't have time. If you don't have time, it clearly shows your level of what of, 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 of investment in that relationship. So I want to trust that we, have, uh, we, have, we are ready to invest into the relationship and apply the necessary skills based on what is there. And I tell you, there's going to be a lot of changes in our lives. God bless you for listening. And God bless you once again. Thank you very much. We shall now make time to be able to take some questions. Do we have anybody online? You may send in your questions by the chat or you may try to raise your hand and you'll be unmuted so that you can come. Somebody has sent a message and says, Amen, Father. And I also say Amen to you too. Thank you very much. Is there any question, please? Somebody says, great presentation, Father. God bless you. And God bless you, too, for making time for this. Thank you. Another person has sent a message. 
thanks for this educative talk. I am very domineering, which is a border to myself. I pray to get into, integra into the integration box. That is a very good one. You know, when you are able to admit, when you are able to admit that this is your situation, it helps. Some, do, not many people who are domineering are able to see that they are domineering. And I think that all you need to do is that you have one good advantage, and that is that you are very assertive. You are able to think about yourself, and you have to just turn it around. The way you think about yourself, the way you think you will not do it, think the same way for the other. Don't say that, as for me, I won't do it, but I don't know what you will do. That's a bad way. That's domineering. You know, when you say that I won't do it, then you must also say to the person, I know you will also not do it. So you see, you think about that person, but you always say that me, I know I won't do it, but I don't know about you. I think you know, you see, that's a domineering spirit coming up there. Okay. Yeah. Another person, there are questions that are coming up. He says that, um, thank you, Father, for the message. Most people think avoiding is always the key. I'm glad you have enlightened us today. Thank you very much. God bless you too. That it's clear about the avoiding. Okay. Father, thank you very much for this education. But which of these tools can be applied in solving conflict with your mother-in-law? With your mother-in-law. <laughs> That's a very good one. I like that. I think that, but you know, all of it can be used. For sometimes, for your mother-in-law, you need, you just need what? You just need to avoid her. You just need to ignore her until she doesn't exist. But sometimes too, you need to be domineering. You need to, you need to, you need to protect your space. Otherwise, you are not going to have chance to marry your wife or your, your, your husband. So you need to protect your space. At another time, you need to be obliging. You need to be able to see what is this woman saying or what is this matter. Maybe it is necessary. And then sometimes you go for the compromise. Well, she has this. I also have that. So that's the compromise. But the best part is integrating. Now, if she is your mother-in-law, then she is your mother. So treat her like you would treat your mother. If your mother were like that, what would you do? Try to win her. Try to get to her. Because remember, she is the mother of your spouse. So you must also try to win it. Remember when they say, if you love me, love my dog. So that's what you have to do. So I put, use all the skills, but integrating is the best. And how do you come to integrating? Find time, find time, and make the time. Time, time, the more. Okay. Then the next one I take, it says that, um, please, what do you have to say about joint account by marriage couples or not joint account. I know the latter has many pitfalls, but which best, which best tool can one adopt to resolve the situation in this case? Well, I think that you have brought an issue about finances. This is a very, very interesting. I have met many couples who have a joint account and they have been very, very successful. And I've also dealt in marriage cases where people with joint accounts ended up so devastating, where one virtually looted the account. So you see, there is no, there is no one thing for both. You should know who you are and who you are dealing with. Some of us are domineering by nature. So for example, if you have a domineering spouse and you are obliging and the two of you uh, having one joint account, then you know that it is like if that person is not godly minded, if that person is not into Christ, then allows himself or herself to be domineering, then that account is going to be in trouble. Whether he's a man or a woman. The same vice versa. You see, if, so you should know what kind of um, conflict resolution to your partner res uh, resolves too often. But if both of you are mature, then you will, you will all move into the integrating level. And when you move into the integrating tool, then you can keep one mother that you call your mother-in-law. Or you can keep two mothers. 
and there will be no problem. And you can keep joint accounts and there will be no problem. And you can keep a, a, the same house and there will be no problem. So oftentimes, when the two of are, when the two are not spiritually mature and everybody is concerned for himself or you are concerned for the other person, you know, this is what is going to bring the different conflict resolution tools. So what is necessary is that the two of you must mature, must allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten you so that if you are domineering, as somebody said, you will relax more. And if you are avoiding, you will step up your game. And if you are obliging, you too, you will be able to what, take some decisions. And if you are always compromising, remember, compromising is not always the best. You must go on to integrate. So the joint account thing, it depends on the maturity of the two people who are getting into the relationship. And I tell you, there are so many people who have good, good, good stories about these. And there are others who have very, very sad stories. I think I hear somebody trying to come online. Is there somebody coming online? Yes, it's Peter. Father, good evening. Good evening, Peter. Yeah, this is Peter from Teshi. And I wanted to ask, is it a silent is the best way to go or if you are trying to solve a problem between the two partners, assuming that me and my wife and she is not ready to listen. So can I say that, okay, if she's not ready to listen, I should just take it like that and just keep quiet and go on. Is that, can, is that one would be a best way to go? Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Now, if you have been listening to me or following what I have been saying, I am saying that there is a time that we use the silent method, the distancing method, or the walking away. For example, if you talk to her and she's not in the best mood, or you are trying to get to her and it is not working for today, in a can they say, or somebody say, and yet nemkwani anajo. Sometimes when the issue has happened, you want to solve everything there and then. It doesn't work. Allow the person to cool off. Because Sebi Sebi, you are not dealing with a child. It is only children that you tell them that don't do it again. Or maybe you force them and you no, it doesn't work that way. You are dealing with an adult who has over the years accumulated or formed a pattern. So if you want to, the person to unlearn, it must go through certain, so you must apply a little bit of domineering and you must apply a little bit of obliging. You must also apply a little bit of avoiding and you must apply a little bit of compromising. When you put these things together, that is what we call integrating. Now, what is integrating? It means that make time. If you are speaking with your wife and your wife is not, make time. Have you found out why your wife says no? Are you domineering such that you don't want to understand what your wife is saying? Or is it that, you see, once they say you are domineering, it means that you have a high sense of self and you have a low sense of the other. So you always think that the other person is the wrong one. You forget that you too can be wrong. That means that you are domineering. So, that, so you have to apply all of them. And to be able to know whether you are domineering or obliging or avoiding or you just merely want compromise, you need to give yourselves time. Find time and talk about the issues. Don't be in a hurry. Don't go to the uh, conflict resolution table with your conclusion. You have made up your mind that I am going to tell her that she has to change. What about you? What, what have you changed for her to change about? So these are the ways that, so you know, if you approach conflict resolution only from a domineering point of view or saying that the other person does not understand and only you understand, that is unfortunately a domineering approach. It doesn't work. And the other person will fight back if he or she is also assertive. He will fight back. So compromising is sometimes is the daily thing that we use but integrating is the best time 
time to talk about. Why, that, why is it that couples, you don't have time to talk about issues? You go and sit at meetings and talk plenty, 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 but you don't have time to come and deal with your marital issues. Okay. Is there, is there anybody on the line again? Okay, I take the other question that have come. It says, please, um, I've talked about the joint account. Another person says, wow, I have been enlightened. I will try to implement the best two in my relationship. Which one are the best two, by the way? Anyway, you know, I'm just laughing because if you are always, if you are always domineering, sometimes you need avoiding. So you see, the best is actually the one that you practice more. You need to balance the others. Remember, David went to Goliath with five stones and he only used one at a time. So you must know all of the tools so that depending on the situation, you use the tool appropriately because there are certain circumstances. If you are going to just find time to integrate, it won't work. You need to take a decision right now. And there are certain circumstances too that as a man, you need to sleep. You know that men don't like to sleep and think about the issues. You remember they, uh, Joseph, when he didn't understand the issue, he slept in the Lord and the angel appeared to him and he was able to take Mary as wife. So sometimes you need to sleep. You need to relax in the Lord. And I tell you, God has a way of giving us new ideas when we sleep in him. Another person says, thank you, Father, for this insight, insightful topic. I have been using avoiding tools. I am now going, I'm now going to use integration and compromising skills. God bless you, my brother. I love this one. I love this one. God bless you. So I know that I pray that God will touch you, I'll use you as a point of contact to bless all of us so that we will all change and modify our tools. Another person says that, thank you, Father Ray, for the teaching. And I know, I now know what I should do to resolve issues in my marriage. Please give me the slide of uh, slides of integration again for me to copy the slide for integration. I will do that for you very very soon. Integration, I think. Yes, I think that is where it is. Okay. Is this integrated? No. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hope you have this, my brother. Thank you. Okay. Another person says, thank you, Father. How can you solve problem if the other partner is not ready? It is gradual. Use integration. You don't force a relationship, uh, somebody to understand. Even children, when you are teaching them, you need time. You need skills. Then if a teacher is going to teach uh, children who are uh, sometimes uh, you say that these children are difficult. They don't understand anything. If a teacher says that, how do you expect the teacher to be successful? So you never say that, how do I teach, how do I go and solve a problem if my partner is not ready? Look, everybody is ready if they have the right motivation. And you must be, you must put yourself in a way such that you can motivate your partner in the right way. Every teacher is capable. I watched a movie, I think like, it says like stars from the heavens or something like that. It's an Indian film with a child that was suffering from dyslexia and that child was being mishandled every, uh, in the house. They took the child to the boarding house. They took the child to the boarding house. And one teacher who's, who was, had patience for the child and, and, and you know, I think I recommend to you, I think the movie is uh, like stars like stars from the heaven or something like that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. How patience, how patience can res result in a lot of good in us. Okay. Another person says, God bless you, Father. Very insightful. Thank you too. So another person says that, what advice will you give to someone whose husband physically abuses her when there is conflict, when there is conflict? Or, or uh, other angry, okay, but will always apologize 
and regret his action. Should you continue integrate or compromise by forgiving them? You know that when a person uses abuse, any form of abuse must not be tolerated. Now, you know, when it comes to counseling, one of the areas in professional counseling, anything that you talk to the person about, you know, it's such that we must keep the confidentiality. But in the area of abuse, when somebody comes to us, my husband is beating me up. You know, you know what it means? If I keep such information, I am condoning and conniving with, with crime. Nobody has the right to beat you up. So if your partner, even if whilst you are married or before you are in the marriage, is applying that, please let the law deal with them. Sometimes we need to call, crack the whip. Because of this katasumu asuntinu, people are beating people in marriages and the women are practicing obliging and the men are practicing obliging. You know, that is obliging. You just say, hmm, and you are dying like that. This is why in the church or in the church, we need to have counselors who know and who know about these things, such that when people report such of these things, you must help the people involved to solve. If the man or the woman will not change, you need to take it higher. You need to take it higher. You see, even my tone has changed because it is sad that you are in a relationship and all you get is beatings or verbal abuse and the like. I think many people have thought and know that that is the order of the day. So they do it without thinking. If the law will, be, we will crack the whip, people will sit up. Hello, Father. Good evening. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Okay. Somebody says, thank you. I love it. I have it. Thank you. Somebody says that, like stars on earth. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. The movie title is Like Stars on Earth. Like Stars on Earth. I thank uh, the, the brother who has just sent it to me. Like Stars on Earth. It talks about patience. I think I recommend this movie for every one of us. Like Stars on Earth. It says that where, where there is continued conflict and one partner wants to use avoidance, but the other wants to use dominating how does one uh, how does it work so if you want to use av uh, avoiding and i also want to use dominating then i'll say go to the red part all of you practice obliging that means giving giving to some place you want to use this i want to use that but why is that you have only chosen two is that the only part go use another part forget about the two of you your, your own. Now go obliging. That means that everybody should do what I say we should do. So now I do what you say you should do and we all do it and we all do your own too. Remember, then we are coming to compromise it. You see, then we are coming. And when I begin to do what you say I should do, and you, I will also do what I say, then we'll be talking about it. But when you did it, how was it? You see that it was not difficult. Then you are moving into where? Integrating. You see how it moves. That's how it should be. But if you stand your ground, if you don't do my own, do yours. By saying that statement, you are not even ready for conflict resolution. That is not good. Well, I guess this is where. Is there somebody on the line since it is nine o'clock? Is there somebody on the line? Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much. And it has been my pleasure coming your way. Okay, there is another person asking, please, Father, I need your full name, my name. Wow, interesting. My name is Reverend Father Raymond Osei-Tutu, a priest of the Archdiocese of Accra, a priest of the Archdiocese of Accra. I'm a Catholic priest. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, I think that, yeah. We shall now prepare, whatever. My dear friends, will you bow our heads and pray with me right now? Pray with me. This is a prayer that I believe you may be going through. Just pray with me. Heavenly Father, 
who will love you. I lift your name over the earth, Father. Lately, I have found myself in a place that I do not want to be. Anger, hatred, and bitterness is causing me to lash out at the people around me and especially at my dear loved ones. I am on the edge at every point. The slightest gesture upsets me. I cannot continue on like this. Oh, Father, please hear my cry. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. Before I give the blessing, I just want to remind us that we are not done with the tools. This is just one of the tools that has come. You know, there are so many tools that we need to do because for you to be able to resolve a conflict, you need to have certain information. And when you have the information, then you learn the skills how to apply them. So information and the skills joined with the grace of God, you are able to make better your life. God in our life, we are more than victorious. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you all for making time for this session of conflict resolution. And I would see you tomorrow morning for morning devotion and on Friday for devotion to St. Anthony. Bye-bye and God bless you. Bye.